Hello, everybody. Hey, Sharon. Okay, I hope you stay awake. Hey, Akasha. Hey, Tr <sighs> hey, Trenda. How is everybody? Yay. Happy Monday. I am so excited to, sorry, like when I see that this like middle part is off, it's going to bug me. Um, but I'm, it did it. All right. There we go. Um, it did it again, <laughs> but, um, I'm so excited to start this week off. Right. I'm so excited to get back into content content, you know, all the shit that no other channels are covering. And I know that, unfortunately, not that many people tune into actual content. And I think that that's a big contributing factor of all this drama going on, um, is that, hey, Rose Gold, hey, Jules, Mwah, Rose Gold, I miss you. <laughs> I know, I want my phone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Fisher. Hey, Molson, man. A big contributor to all this this drama, I feel like, is because so many people tune into it, you know? But I'm excited to put the pressure on myself to get back on track, start covering cases. And I'll address things when I want to address things. Like after tonight's live, I have a members only live. So after I get done covering the silent twins, I'll go on members only and that's where I'm gonna chit chat. And we'll address things going on in the community and whatnot. Thank you, Lori. Yeah, I'm feeling better. Um, I'm excited to cover content. That's a Hi, Janessa. I'm excited. It's been a while. And I'm really excited to cover this case. So as you guys know, last week I did my first poll on my community tab of which case would you like me to dive deep into first? Yes, I'm Fisher. Um, Yes, Akasha, I agree completely. Oh, most of man. Janessa is here. So um, it was Rebecca Zahau, which, oh, like, I'm going to go into all these cases. It was just a matter of what we did first. Rebecca Zahau, Kanika Jenkins, um, Brandon Swanson, the Silent Twins, and Maura Murray. I think that was the top, or am I missing one more? I went to go check my phone again. I just went to go check my phone and my phone's broken. Let me show you. Actually, I'll show you guys what it's doing. Cause if anybody is familiar with this and has an option, please. So you go to start the phone. Watch. Now imagine if we fast forward this to like eight hours from now, it's never going to turn on. So if anybody is familiar with why my phone won't turn on, I'd appreciate it. Anybody, anybody. Doesn't matter if I do this, press the power button. The only way I'm even getting it to shut off completely is if I hold the side button and the home button at the same time. And like if I hold it simultaneously, it eventually will do that. Hey, Sarah something. Hey, Blues Girl. Really, Rose Gold? Put it in rice, warm rice. But it's not... I did Akasha. But it's not... See, and it just started again by itself. Um, but it's not water damage. I know you could use rice if it's water damage. I didn't have water damage. The only thing that I know, besides it being an iPhone 6, so it's really old, <laughs> um, besides that, is it's completely beyond maxed out of storage. So I don't know if that would cause it to, like, just, you know? But it sucks because all my daughter's pictures are in here. And access to my banking account and stuff, I can't. Like, I have a lot of it through one bank app, GoBank. I, I don't have access to it. I don't have access to anything. No, I didn't drop it, Mel. Like, it's just gone. And I can't access, I don't, like, I can't access my bank. I can't access anything. And it sucks. 
<laughs> so, but other than that, I'm excited to get, I'm excited to get onto the silent twins. So, yeah, rose gold. I know that that's been an option. If your phone gets wet, throw it in rice because it'll help absorb it. But there is no water down. I've actually protected this stupid little iPhone 6 like my life depended on it because all the other phones I've ever had since my daughter was born broke. And I never, I'd never backed up any of her photos. So all my pregnancy photos, all the photos from when my daughter was in the hospital, all the way up until she was um, five, six years old gone. I have nothing. So this phone, I had every single photo stored on it. And now it, it just, I have like, mm, that's what I'm most angry about. I am freaking out. I'm for sure. And like, it couldn't have come at like a worse time, like in my life, like, cause I got a million other real life shit I have to deal with. Um, but isn't that the saying, right? Or when it, when it rains, it pours. Ah, oh, rose gold. Yeah, this like I, I'm telling you, they. Yeah, but mostly, man. The last time, because I used to have a six plus when it first came out, like the big one, not a six plus, whatever is like the big a six. They had a bigger one, and it wouldn't turn on. And they said they can't get the photos for me. Has been telling me a few weeks to get a new phone because it's not going to be compatible very soon. I may have been knowing glitches at time. Yeah, Mel Hawks. And they do that on purpose. Uh, iPhones, at least, intentionally slow down your phone when there's new updates or new upgrades. So you have to get the newer one. But, like, there's broke bitches out here. Some of us are single moms and shit. Like, don't, don't slow down my phone. And it's only iPhones that does that. But I only like that. Like, I've tried Galaxies before. And they're not good. But anyway, I'm excited to cover the Silent Twins. And like I said, after I'm going to be doing a members only live. Um, so let me get up my little slideshow presentation. While put a one in the chat if you're familiar. Yes, I have, Janessa. Janessa. No, I do rose gold, but I'm not tech savvy and it went beyond iCloud storage. I don't know how to do all that shit. Like, I'm just really not good with technology. Um, okay. Put a one in the chat. If you're familiar with the silent twins, put a two in the chat. If you don't know about the silent twins. As soon as you could pay your phone off, it suddenly fucks up. Coincidence not. Yeah, Molson man, yep. I locked my phone in my house one night and didn't have my house key either. So I couldn't get it into the phone. Suddenly I realized I didn't know anybody's phone. I know, right? Hi, Cheryl. Two. Okay, you don't know. One, two, two, two. Okay, one, two. I like that a lot of people don't know about this. I like I like it. And anyone for, who does know about it knows how bizarre it is. But I'm excited that not many people because these are the cases I want to tell you guys about and I'm telling you it's it's bizarre and anybody who believes in that twin phenomenon where you could read read each other's minds or you could feel each other's energies or one twin gets into an accident and the other twin immediately knows they could feel something is off this story is going to blow your mind So, hold on one moment. <sighs> yeah, their their photo itself was freaky, right, Lori? Oh, oh, and my birthday is in two weeks from today. And I'm going to act like I'm 16 and act like you guys all give a shit, but I'm turning 31. And I'm still going to flaunt it. I turned two, two, my, my birthday's two weeks from today. And Bryn and Brittany apparently are going to host a birthday live for me. 
Hey, Buttercup. Your husband is a twin? Oh, I'm interested. Road, as you listen to me explain this story, I want you to tell me if you've ever heard your husband mention anything about this. Yes, I know Rose Gold because we share a birthday, right? Should I make, should I go make three GoFundMes for a new phone? Would that, would that justify outdoing her? Oh, thank you, Sarah. Something I appreciate that. Sorry, I had to take the dig. I'm excited for this. Hey, Carrie. Uh, sorry, Nicole, but I appreciate you staying. Okay. So this is going to be the story of, stop it, Buttercup. You'll donate rose gold? Woohoo! <laughs> um, this is going to be the story of June and Jennifer Gibbons. Telling you, it's going to freak you out. Okay, ready. Really, they're do. Aw, thank you, Molson Man. You guys are sweet. Yes, Megabytes. Really, Carrie? I'd love to hear. See, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion about this. Okay, let me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, here we go. Let's take off. Oh, yes, yeah, Sarah said, like, see, so many people have, t like, familiar and have twins. That's so funny. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I could do it like this. All right. So let me get my notes. You have a twin sister, Jules? Oh my God. All right. I'm I'm really happy that so many people are in here that either are around twins, are familiar with twins, and or related or married to twins. Because I want you guys to be the ones to tell me if any of this sounds familiar. Thank you, Emma Fisher. You guys are so nice. Thank you. All right. Let me take off. To the Maju, I got this. So this is June and Jennifer Gibbons on my screen. And if anyone even saw the thumbnail to this, that's their legitimate photo. And the thumbnail's energy screams weird to me. Okay. Ooh, enjoy whatever you're eating, Blues Girl. All right, ready? Oh, Rose Gold. Okay. So this is the story of the silent twins. June and Jennifer Gibbons 
were identical twins. They claim that they knew they were twins before they were old enough to understand, okay? So what they claim is from before they were old enough to even understand what twins were, they knew that they were split. That is the way they explain it. The way they referred to themselves is they were one soul, one person split into two. June and Jennifer both suffered from a really extreme speech impediment. They can only understand each other. Okay. A very, very, it is the good to see you. Very, very extreme speech impediment. Um, and their parents couldn't understand what they were saying. Family couldn't understand what they were saying. They also had a younger sister who originally shared a room with them, could not understand what they were saying. But they could understand each other perfectly. And it's very peculiar that one can have a speech impediment, but for both of the twins to have an identical speech impediment is very unique. Love you, the tick, the tick. Okay. They had to repeat themselves constantly because nobody would understand. Imagine, and I actually had a speech impediment when I was younger too. I had to go to therapy and everything. So I, I even remember this. Imagine your own mom having to say, what? I'm sorry, what did you say? What do you want? You know what? And you, you're repeating yourself over and over and over again. Nobody else was able to understand them except one another. Eventually, the girls just stopped talking. They no longer communicated with their mom, with their dad, anyone outside of each other. Then they ended up creating their own language. Yes, you heard me. At only a few years old, they created a language that only June and Jennifer understood. Nobody else knew what they were saying except one another. I was born in 1990, Molson. Oh, where were they born? I thought you were saying, what year were you born, Melissa? Um, Hold on, let me actually check. They were born in, and they're from Wales. Nineteen sixty three, April nineteen sixty three. Okay. So they created their own language. When the girls went to school, they were good students, but again, they didn't speak. Okay. Other kids bullied them bullied them a lot. And teachers were getting frustrated with them because, again, they did not talk. So yes, they were good students, but there was no communication. So, and back in the 60s, they didn't have the programs that we have today. And a lot of things were overlooked. And they were the only black girls in the school. So as you can assume, racism was a big issue. They were bullied constantly. The way the teachers and students were described 
were completely emotionless. They did not acknowledge other people. Oh, wow, twin mama. I have a twin brother and also had twin girls. So now there's five sets of twins in the family. None were identical to That is so crazy. Wow. Okay, so they did not another uh, um, acknowledge others. Everyone thought they were extremely strange, okay? So it's these two twin girls who would be walking down and they wouldn't talk to anyone else except each other. They were bullied and they were also the only black black girls in school. So they eventually had to, the teachers eventually had to start dismissing June and Jennifer an hour before school actually ended to avoid the bullying, which is really sad, which is really, really sad. They would have to leave school an hour early to try to avoid all that harassment. They were taken to a child psychologist and they were diagnosed with selective mutism, which basically means that in social situations, mostly school, job, whatever it may be, they choose to not be able to communicate. It's Well, I don't want to say choose. It's not so much a choice versus such an overwhelming anxiety that they just don't talk in certain settings. But usually when they feel comfortable or, in, or safe, they will communicate. But eventually they were sent to a special education school um, because the normal school, schools weren't, yes, most of man, selective mutism. So the schools weren't equipped to handle it, trained to handle it, nothing. So they were eventually sent to a special education school. I actually also knew a selective um a selective mutist. I don't know how to refer to it as in my school. I was friends with her and she didn't even talk to me. Okay. June and Jennifer would eat and drink by themselves. They would not eat around their parents, around their sister, around anyone else. They had to eat alone. Obviously, that wasn't the case in school because they couldn't eat alone. So they would sit at the cafeteria and they would eat in unison. They would take their bites at the same time. They would take a sip of their drink at the same time. Hey, Crystal. Selective mutism is pretty rare. I've only had one kid that had it. And with his therapist, I helped him feel comfortable talking in class. Once he opened up, he talked. Oh, that's amazing, Carrie. They had one younger sister, Molson Man, And she originally shared a room with them. And they, she explained that they would play with dolls and stuff. They would talk. June and Jennifer would talk to each other, but not to her. But eventually... The sister moved out into her own room and June and Jennifer stopped talking to her completely. So they would eat in unison. Again, bites at the same exact time, drinks at the same exact time. They don't talk to anybody else except one another in their own language. They only stayed in their room at home. When June or Jennifer wanted to watch a movie, they would write a letter to their mom, explain what movie they wanted to watch, what time they wanted to watch it, and their mother would set the TV up downstairs and the girls would watch from outside of their room downstairs. They'd be upstairs in their room. They'd write a letter. With the what movie, you know, I want to watch A Wonderful Life at 8 p.m. tonight. And the mother would turn the TV, play it, and they would sit in their room and watch it down the stairs. They did not communicate with anyone. 
They had to watch it alone from outside of their bedroom. At around 11 years old, Yes, the ch- exactly. At around 11 years old, they began to walk in sync with each other. They would walk down the hallways in the school, and step for step, they would be in unison, like the army marching. They are identical. If someone walked past them, They would stop walking, stare at them, wait for them to be out of sight, and then they continued to walk. So you would understand why people were weary of them, thought they were strange. They did not talk. They ate in unison. They walked in unison. When somebody approaches them or even goes to walk by, yes, Molson Man. They would stop dead in the tracks, watch, wait for them to leave, and then continue walking. That is uh, some shining shit, yes. They were very clear, June and Jennifer, that they did not do this on purpose. And this is where it gets interesting. This isn't something like bratty kids, hey, kick save. No, they were real. They were twins. They were twins. Um, oh, right. Grouchy Mama Bay. Yes. Um, Nicole. They didn't do this on purpose. They were not bratty kids who we want to just, you know, we're twins. We want to look the same and do the same. No, no, no. This actually frustrated them. They did not want to be like that. But they claimed they had no choice. Like, let that sink in. They had no choice but to act this way. Now, June and Jennifer, especially because they had so many issues communicating, they loved to write. And they kept many, many diaries. Written in their diaries, and again, we're about age 11 right now. They wrote that they believed it was a good idea if they separated. No, hey, spinning crosses. No, Lori, there was not. They were writing that it was a good, they thought it was a good idea if they separated. If they separated, it would give them the opportunity to live a normal life. So they really believed this, okay? They thought that if we could just separate at 11 years old, if we could just separate from each other, maybe because, again, they weren't they weren't doing this because they wanted to do this. They weren't in. okay, Rose Gold. They weren't in sync with each other because they were trying to or not communicating with other people because they didn't want to. They couldn't. So they said, maybe if we separate, we could live a normal life. So they sent one of them away to live elsewhere. Buckle up for this part, guys. This is where it gets fucking crazy. They sent one of the twins away and one of the twins stayed home. This was the twins wanting. This was their idea. Thinking it would help them thrive. When one of them left, The girls stopped eating, drinking, walking, sleeping, and communicating. The girls legitimately became catatonic. Molson Man, they are the ones, yeah, they were the ones who wanted to be separated because they couldn't live like this anymore. So they thought maybe they could live a normal life if they weren't together. And they became catatonic. They were no longer able to function. 
catatonic, you guys, basically means you are not co consciously there anymore. You lose ability for your motor skills. Yes, twin mama. I'm sure that must be frustrating. Um, they became in a state of, I don't know, catatonia. They were catatonic. Okay. So they had no choice but to bring the girls back together. So they did. The girls came back together, went back home, and they went back into the room that they shared with one another. Oh, Jesse Wait, Wilson, man. They ended up buying courses, how to courses on how to communicate effectively. These girls wanted desperately to communicate with, with, with other people. They did not want to live this type of life. So they bought how-to books on how to communicate and audios to listen to so they could truly, genuinely work on their social skills. But it didn't help. They could not break their silence. Which then led to years of depression. These girls suffered years and years of depression because they tried everything they possibly could to no avail. So they decided to channel their anger towards writing. And they wrote quite a few books. They wrote qu quite a few books and they really believed that this may be where they thrive. This might be their passion. They could become a writer. Unfortunately, the, their books did not get any to little attention at all. So now the girls are 16 years old. Okay. And they meet a pair of twin boys from America. The four of them end up spending the entire summer together and they partied hard. These two boys were into drinking, going to the club, dabbling in some drugs. And so June and Jennifer followed suit. But the girls began arguing over the boys. Their relationship became more and more toxic. It's one thing when you're a kid, right? But you know what it's like being 16 years old. Imagine in that toxic relationship with the twin with all those factors and not some volatile relationship happening. Yes, Mosa man. Yes, they met the twin boys, and they spent every day, all day together. In one of Jennifer's diary entries, she explained that she tried to strangle June with a radio cord. So when I say a toxic relationship, I'm not... I'm not, you know, being dramatic. Jennifer tried to strangle June with a radio cord. And this is all documented in their diaries. They've kept these diaries their whole life, okay? So this is what people have studied. Come the end of the summer, the boys return to America which was very, very hard on June and Jennifer. Yes, they were very violent towards each other, Rose Gold, to the point of attempted murder. So the boys leaving and going back to America was very, very hard on June and Jennifer. They decided they wanted to take their anger out on society. They wanted to do as much damage 
as possible. That is how they explain it in their diaries. They wanted to do as much damage as possible and take their anger out on society. In October, they ended up burning down a huge store in their town. In June's diary, she spoke about how proud she was and said it was the best day of her life. Oh, Wilson, you just wait. It gets crazier. It was the best day of her life. And she would keep doing it until she got caught. Well, they did end up getting caught because of their diary entries. Their diary entries was the the evidence they needed to prove it was indeed June and Jennifer. So they were placed in a cell together in jail. But they were constantly getting separated because the girls would fight. The girls would fight like crazy. So in jail, they would separate them. Okay? But once the girls were separated, they became paralyzed and catatonic without each other. So again, just like when they were little girls, they were volatile. They were angry. They hated each other. Yet once you separated them, they became catatonic and could not eat, drink, go to the bathroom, nothing. Molson. I think it was Wales, Rose Gold. Um, at this point in their lives, they claimed they hated each other and they wished the other one would die. So, and I really hope that puts things into perspective when you think about how in unison these girls were. Oh, thank you so, thank you so much, Sandy. Yeah. How much these girls were in unison with, with one another, with one another. They walk in unison. They very rarely talked, but when they had a, also that really bad speech impediment that followed them their whole lives, no one could really understand them. They did not do anything with other people. But then once you remove them from one another, they no longer can function. Just like this. Okay? I know, Carrie. The prison ended up sending the girls to Broadmoor Hospital. They assumed the girls were suffering from schizophrenia. But it was actually proven that no, the girls were not suffering from schizophrenia at all. So the judge sentenced them originally from prison to indefinitely stay at Broadmoor Hospital. Because they knew, the judge knew the girls were not going to get the help that they clearly needed in prison. But they also were not safe to be released from the public. The judge was really freaked out by the girls, okay, and the entire situation. So at 19 years old, they go into Broadmoor Hospital indefinitely. They were not happy. They spent two years at Broadmoor in two separate wards, okay? June was in one ward. Jennifer was in another ward. They were only allowed to send letters to their parents and each other, but that is it. In one of, Je uh, in one of Jennifer's letters to June, she spoke about how she knew she was going to die sooner than June would. So again, this is all documented. Jennifer wrote to June 
and spoke about how she knew she was going to die before June. Being separated in the different wards eventually led the girls to begin to hallucinate. So not only were they catatonic, not only could they not function, they eventually began hallucinating. Molson, yes. So the way that the hospital staff explain it, even though they were in two different wards, they'd be doing identical things at the same time. No contact with one another besides letters. But June in one ward and Jennifer in another ward were simultaneously doing the same things. They were eventually given tranquilizers. The girls didn't like being on the tranquilizers. It made their mind very fuzzy. They stopped writing letters because their eyes became so blurry and they couldn't see the paper. Um, but they did eventually start speaking a little bit. Um, and they hoped that that would lead them to be released. Yeah, Melissa, and I'm, I'm glad too, because I have so many of these bizarre cases. These are my passion, and this is what I was planning on covering. Then I got caught up with a bunch of other shit. But getting back onto these cases, because I'm telling you guys, they're crazy. They're amazing. So the girls eventually started to speak a little bit while on these tranquilizers, and they had hoped that they would be released. Each year, they would go in and be evaluated by the judge. Each new court case, each new year, but the judge kept remanding them to do another year, another two years. The judge was scared of them. He didn't understand it, and he didn't feel comfortable letting them out and releasing them into society. Maybe the... Yes, that's true, Sarah, something, yes. So they were 12 years in the hospital at this point. 12 years. One month before turning 30, the girls were transferred to a different hospital. This hospital was a lot more laid back. The staff was better. And the girls were looking forward to this transfer. While transporting June and Jennifer from Broadmoor to the new hospital, Jennifer kept explaining that she didn't feel well. She told June that she knew she was going to die. Once at the new facility, they took Jen immediately to the hospital. Shortly after she arrived, Jen died on March 9th of acute myocarditis, which is a sudden inflammation of the heart. That condition is rarely fatal. There was no evidence of drugs or poison. She died of natural causes. June explained. Yes, a month before she turned 30, Sandy, 29. June explained that on the car ride from Broadmoor to the new hospital, Jennifer had her head laying down on June's lap. She described her as sleeping with her eyes open. She said that Jennifer had been acting strange that entire week and the days leading up. Jen's tombstone is written 
And I quote, we once were two, we two made one, we know more two, through life be one. Rest in peace. June wrote this poem for, Jen for Jennifer's tombstone. But she wrote this poem for Jennifer's tombstone before she died. Jennifer wrote that poem. I mean, June wrote that poem for Jennifer's tombstone before she died. June stayed in the facility for another year. And she wrote in her diary all about her sister and how she was dealing with the grief of her. But in a way, she was relieved. There was a weight that was lifted. June felt finally free from the insanely tight and toxic relationship. June said, and I quote, I'm free at last, liberated. And at last, Jennifer has given up her life for me. June and Jennifer actually knew that one of them had to die in order for the other one to live a good life. They said that if, o <laughs> if only one of them were alive, they would be free from their suffering. It seems as though Jennifer had planned her own death. In March 18, 1994, June was released from the hospital. It took June a long time to process her sister's death, to stop feeling guilty about being the one that got to live because she knew one of them had to die. By 2008, June was living quietly and independently near her parents in West Wales. So that's my little synopsis. And now let's get into it. I need to hear your guys' thoughts. There are, there's two interviews with June that have taken place that you could watch. There's some footage of June and Jennifer when they were younger in school, how they would walk, how they would eat in synchronicity. Oh, thank you, Rose Gold. Yes, yeah, she did. The June went on to live a normal life. They knew one of them had to die. If they both continued to live, they would not be living. They would be trapped and they would be suffering. So Jennifer sacrificed herself and she died of natural causes. No poison, no foul play, and there was a big investigation. Hi, Purple Pixie. I know Akasha. I'll pull up June now for you guys so you guys could see it. I could probably get a clip of June now. And um, 
you guys will be able to hear the the very heavy speech impediment she had. Um, Carrie, she talked about her and her sister, what it was like growing up, the things that they would do, what she felt. And she explained the passing of her sister. These are her own words that one of them had to die. They were aware. So June struggled with the fact that she was the one who got to live. How, you know, like it's crazy. So this is June. This is in one of her interviews. Let me see if I could pull up the interview without my whole freaking live getting shut down, okay? Okay. Well, um, so it's Silent Twins Without My Shadow, but I got to be careful because it might shut my live down just from playing it. But if you guys could even hear at least her impediment, and imagine this as a kid and how much worse it would be. That was a waste of time. Mm. Be individual. We don't want to be known as twins. We'd rather be individual people with our own mind and our own different personalities. I've got to go and see Mr. Harry about something, and then I'll come and tell you when it's time for dinner. All right? Thank you. That was a good, good lesson today. As June and Jennifer became locked in their twinship, they progressively withdrew from their family. I just linked the interview, guys. In the safety of their bedroom, they created a rich, make-believe world of dolls. And the speed at which... Wait. And we'll I want eat. you guys to watch Good. this, okay? Hold Goodbye. on. Goodbye. And Tina. Goodbye. And Lydia. Goodbye. Goodbye. So long. The time is good at five past nine. And the time for me is a good thing. When we were a family, we didn't eat meals with them. We ate our meals in the bedroom. We couldn't chew in front of people. We couldn't eat food, drink, or do anything like that. That's normal. Normal everything that people do, they were granted. We couldn't do it. We were too sensitive. Wherever possible, the twins this will is queue June and, and Jennifer. sit together for the meal and will often eat in unison. During meal times, the rest of the children take absolutely no notice of the two girls. Although the twins start their dinner at the same time as the other children, the amount of food they put on the fork and the speed at which they eat is so slow that while everyone else is finishing their second course and leaving the dining room, the twins are still busy with their first. My reason it was Jennifer was quite turban. It would be struggle to be an individual being a twin. If we go and find the right, right step to break out and be yourself, we never will. We were stuck up in twin. The idea of separation came really from the girls. It was something they wrote about a lot. They would always say, we will talk if we're separated, we'll walk normally, we'll eat normally, we'll do all these things if we're separated. It would be a good idea if we separate. I think one should go and one should stay here. We act stupid when we're together. Some people think we don't want to separate, but we want to, because it really is the best thing for us. It would be good if we separate. We both fight for the best things. We're both willing to lead our own lives, but when we're together, we just keep depending on each other too much. We tried it on the base. That was at school, Sarah something. That was at the special education school. I can't keep playing it. I'm probably already going to get striked for it. But what do you guys think? 
this goes beyond and that's the type of stuff that fascinates me when it goes beyond what we can understand there's clearly something more to this story and the fact that they jennifer knew she had to sacrifice her life and she laid her head down into june's lap and she told her i'm going to die and then she died of natural causes And June explained, I'm free at last. Jennifer sacrificed herself so I could live a normal life. They knew they couldn't just separate. They've tried. In jail, they were separated. In the hospital, they were separated. And when they were younger, their parents sent one away. And they became catafuckantonic. Exactly, Carrie. She did not commit suicide. She died of a sudden inflammation of her heart, which is very rare, rarely fatal, and not for a 29-year-old. And not something that you predict. And June wrote that poem for Jennifer's headstone before Jennifer died. They knew Jennifer was going to die. She sacrificed herself so June can go on and live a normal life. So here, let me. Exactly, twin mama. Okay, so let's see. So let's go to. No, I need to know, like, where she is now. Well, here, let's look at this, actually. 16, 15 horrifying facts about June and Jennifer Gibbons. June and Jennifer Gibbons were inseparable, but had a volatile relationship. The twins were institutionalized due to their increasingly violent behavior. Jennifer seemingly predicted her own death. The twins were isolated by their secret language. Jennifer and June both wrote manuscripts containing extreme violence. Jennifer was reportedly deeply jealous of June. The girls walked in perfect unison during adolescence. The twins would become catatonic when separated. June claimed to have heard Jennifer's last words. And Jennifer's last words were, at long last, we're out. Like, while she laid her head, what the heck is this ad? While she laid her head in June's lap, she said, at last, at long last, we're out. Meaning we are out of this hell that we have been traps, trapped in. The twins would hide in their room after leaving school. Like I said, they would not leave that room. 
Jennifer and June were bullied in school due to their race. Jennifer and June exhibited strange behavior during an interview. When writer Matt, um, Marjorie Wallace visited the girls at the Broadmoor for an interview and that photo that you guys said, oh, they looked beautiful there smiling, the tall white woman behind them was Marjorie Wallace. They had to be carried in by guards. Jennifer and June had to be carried in by guards. Wallace claimed that the girls were carried in like a plank or like a coffin on the guards' shoulders. When they sat down, June and Jennifer cast their eyes to the floor, avoiding eye contact. It was only when Wallace asked about the girls' writing that they finally began to talk. Hey, Queen Bee. Hey, Chrissy Lou. Sorry, guys, I'm on a totally different screen. Um, Oh, thank you, Chrissy Lou. June wrote a poem for Jennifer's headstone. After Jennifer's passing, June wrote, well, actually, no, it was before Jennifer's passing. June wrote that she was hysterical with grief. She expressed her sorrow and loss through a poem, which she penned, Jennifer's headstone is engraved. We once were two. We two made one. We know more too, through life be one. Rest in peace. I don't know why they got that wrong. It was before. It's proven in the diaries. June became slightly more social after Jennifer's passing. June never fulfilled her dreams of being a writer. I don't see the point in writing books now. I can communicate by talking now. Can't I? Sorry, my screen was like. So again, they went to writing because they could not communicate. But June explains she doesn't need to communicate via the books anymore because she can communicate herself now. So let's see. And I would suggest you guys reading their diary entries. Go read their diaries. Um, why well, can't, but they're making a movie about them. June remained at Caswell for another year. Jennifer's death. Doo -doo -doo. She has built a new life with her, for herself without her sister. She still lives in the near area of her parents, but she has tried to keep out of the spotlight save for some pre uh, previous interviews. So yeah, like the last I know is like 2008. I don't know what, I haven't been able to find anything since then. Well, that's the thing, M. Fisher. Why they tried separating, but when they separated, they couldn't because they were still two living halves. They needed to be together to function as one. But if one died... I guess it they were able to go he like June was able to go on. Oh, really, Cheryl? It seems to me like their two bodies didn't know what to do when they were close to each other or something. Almost like the soul didn't know which body to use. Well, that's the thing. Is this was this a curse? Was this something that had a past life intertwined? They're, they are making the movie Rose Gold. Yes, Chrissy Lou. They had a severe speech impediment. They only were able to understand each other. 
to the point where eventually they just stopped talking, then created their own language. Um, and after they were institutionalized and put on tranquilizers and separated, they did start to talk slowly, but they have selective mutism. And so they would channel it through their writings. But now that Jennifer passed, June explained she no, no longer needs to write or pursue that career because she's able to communicate on her own now. She wasn't able to. It's okay, Chrissy. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think that there was some type of curse? Do you think that this was really one soul that did break and shatter into two and it could not function? It was messed up because of it. Do you think that there was some type of reincarnation gone wrong? I know it sounds crazy, but like expand your mind. What could this possibly be? 29, Chrissy Lou. Oh, yeah, Mel. I'm interested, too. You can look up. There's some footage of them as kids because they were so strange. It was so unusual. So they did document it. Oh, wow, Twin Mama. I just think it's so interesting. So very interesting. I've heard of the twin phenomena. Even during World War II with the Nazis, certain doctors, they experimented on twins. They did some fucked up experiments on twins because they know that there is something there that's beyond our understanding. There is something there that is beyond our understanding. But this, what happened here? They were tormented. They hated it. They tried. It almost seems like Jennifer is like a parasite. And no, you're not saying that to be disparaging. That is how June explained it. She loved her sister. They loved each other, but they fucking despised and resented each other because they could not function with or without them. They did, Queen Bee. They did some really messed up experiments on kids. Yeah, right, Molson Man? Yeah, it it is cool, but it's scary. Scary. I like if if you guys are interested in this, I could do a part 2 where we legit if I could figure out how to I can't do screen recordings or anything like that, but if I could find out how to like take clips from the interviews, like the highlighted points, um, and then maybe go through some diary entries, go through the diary entries of when they were a couple of years old to when they're teenagers, to when they were in prison, to when they were in the hospital. They documented everything. Yeah, Carrie, maybe. Exactly, Mel Hawks. Yes. Yes, Sandy. Yes. You guys, great. Great theories. I really love them. You guys on part two? Yeah, I could I could pull out, I'll try to find like the most significant diary entries and put it in a timeline format. So you guys could hear in their own words what they were experiencing in real time. Can you imagine? They were begging, separate us. We can't, we cannot function. And then they get separated and they become catatonic. Their body body physically stops functioning. And then you get put back to each other and then you hate each other. You love each other, but you fucking hate them. You cannot live. You cannot live. And so one sacrificed their own life so the other could live a full life. You cannot continue living two horrible trapped lives so I sacrifice mine so you can now live, which is beautiful. It is beautiful. 
Yes, I did spinning crosses. The two, there's footage of it too. And one of them ended up murdering someone after that. Oh, thank you so much, Molson. That was, that's like a really nice compliment. Akasha, I would totally take, if you're serious and you really want to help with like research, I would love that. Like, cause it's a, it's actually a lot to try to, um, get in order to present, but I like, I would love that. No pressure though, but I promise not to release like any messages or anything. I know other people can't promise the same. <laughs> um, yeah, M. Fisher, you can see how you love them. That, that's your, especially if you feel like you're a split person, you know, like you are one person split. You are a shattered consciousness. And that's what I think it goes beyond. Like, is your soul the same thing as a consciousness? But it's shattered. Something happened to where it really did shatter and they could not. You love it because it's the other half of you, but you resent it because you are not whole. Um, yeah, they ended up going to jail because they set a store ablaze on fire in their town. No, Akasha, not, we don't need part two of that. Yes, I'm for sure. And that's how she explained it. There was a story where the twin. Yes. Okay. So there is a story, there's footage of this pair of twins, woman. And they were pulled over, I don't remember what, for. And you're watching the body, body cam fo footage, okay? And the cops are talking to this, these twin women. And all of a sudden, at the same time, the two women run into oncoming traffic and get plummeted. One got hit by a, the truck, like a huge truck. Another one, I don't remember. You could watch this footage. Um, then those same twins jumped off a bridge together. They survived. And one of them went on to murder someone, stab someone to death. Yes, Curry. Yep. I could get into that too. I would love that, Janessa. Oh, my goodness. Like, that, I would love that. Anybody who's interested in in diving deep into cases and wanting to help, I'd, I'd love that. That would mean a lot. Here, I'll put my email up for anyone who I don't already talk to. It's okay, Rose Gold. Conjoined twins share the senses of touch and taste and even control one another's limbs. Then there is Shamira twins. When the fraternal twin dies and the DNA stays in the living twin's body. Wow. Wow, Mel. There's some case about these sisters or twins and they were yoga instructors and drove themselves off a cliff. Yes, wait. That, is that the same twins who ran into on They either drove off a cliff or they jumped off a bridge I thought I don't know I know it's like the two women from another country blonde women there was nothing stranger than watching these two women just bolt into oncoming traffic and get slammed by a freaking tractor trailer <sighs> yeah maybe Sandy they said it was their the happiest day of their lives Yes, the overpass. Yes, Chrissy Lou. These two are yoga instructor girls for I'll have to look into that. It's just so bizarre. I think that Yep. Akasha, yep. I think that their soul was shattered. And I don't know what that even means myself as I'm explaining it. But something happened where 
they're, they're what makes you you, right? We're all just vessels. We're all just bodies. There's really no difference between me and you except our consciousness, our soul, our personality. What makes you you? And something happened where theirs became fractured. Part in one, part in another. And it tormented them. And imagine if your consciousness or soul, you only had half of it and the other half was like, that would be, I don't know, man. Anastasia and Alexandria Duval. That sounds very familiar. Oh, Queen B. I wonder if her sister was right there with her when she died, you know, when part of the soul. Well, Carrie, that's how she explained it. They were leaving from Broadmoor Hospital, getting transferred to the new hospital. And uh, Jennifer laid her head in June's lap. And she explained, finally, we're free. And I'm going to die. She flat out said, and the person who was driving them recalls this exact scenario and said she told June she was going to die, but they were free now. And so when they got to the new um, psych hospital, they admitted June, but they took Jennifer immediately to the hospital. And when she got to the hospital, she was pronounced dead. So basically, she said her goodbyes to June and told her, you're free now and go live a life. And they left and she died. Yes, Chrissy Lou. She was able to communicate. As you see, she was able to do that interview. You guys saw the clip of the interview. I don't think you guys understand the progress that she made. She wasn't able to talk. She was not, there was no communication. She was able to talk, but they didn't talk. Yes, Sandy. Consciousness. Out of everything that we have the ability to do with technology these days, we could create AI that is a million times smarter than us. But why don't we feel bad unplugging a robot, right? It's so smart. It could cook. It could clean. It could, it could talk. It could think. Because is it a machine or is it now a conscious me being? What At what point does it become a conscious being? Because conscious, consciousness is the one thing we can't explain. We can't account for. We don't know what it is. That's the truth. Exactly, Carrie. Yes, Molson, I would love to do that. Pick a day. Pick a day, Molson. As long as it's not three months away, like last time, like we, we kept pushing it off. We kept having so much to do. But I would love to. And I'm not familiar really at all with the Lindbergh, so I would have to go deep with it. But I'm down. No, not necessarily media is evil. I I don't, what is it though, right? You could say consciousness. Is your consciousness your soul? I don't know. Okay, Chrissy Lou. Yeah, I would go back. Like if you're, if you, this sounds interesting to you, I would go back. It's not that long of a live and I'm not going to keep it that long for anyone who is interested in watching it. Because at least for me, if I see it's hours long, I'm not going to click on it. Um. Yeah, Sandy. There is a website you could go to of all AI generated photos of people who don't exist. So it shows you a bunch of faces of people that don't exist. It was created. And you're looking at these photos and they look freaky only because those people don't exist. Like there's something strange and off about it. 
Right. Robots, humans are created by God and robots are created by people. And, well, exactly, media is evil, but that bears the question, at what point are humans playing God? You can't go around creating people. And that's what they're doing. They're cloning people and they're creating AI. At what point are you playing God? Is she media as evil? Oh my god, don't freak me out like that. And my second eldest brother was a twin and the twin was... Oh, wow. My son talks about this all the time. He believed that AIs can kill the human race. If an AI is told to make something the most effective way, it could be at the... A hundred percent spinning crosses. And I don't think you guys understand the rapid rate of AI. If you want to understand, listen to Elon, Elon Musk explain it. When you teach AI, AI anything, it is able to, uh, I do I do such a horrible job of explaining it, but it is able to learn at the rate it's going. It is millions of years beyond human capability, like where we're at mentally. AI surpasses it. So that puts you at the risk of if they are taught and functioned, if you put in code and function the most effective way we need to run this world, they are going to eliminate humans because we are not the most effective way. Um, Nasa, the last, no, he had a baby with, with what's her name, that girl. Yes, Molson Man, and our phones are an extension of our bodies. Replica, replica, maybe, Sandy? I mean, I don't think Elon Musk separated from his baby mama, did he? Grimes dumped him? Well, not like he'd be interested in me. I got a bit of a crush on him. I know, I know, I know. Don't get me started. But I'm a sapiosexual, and I've told you guys that before. So, And I love space. So even though I wish he had more faith in Earth versus Mars, but, like, I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, I'm also a man. Huh. But now that I have you guys here, right? And we could do a part two to the Silent Twins. But which one is next on the list of the options I gave you? Should I go for the second one? Ooh, Rose Gold, are you a flat earther? Are you a flat earther, Rose Gold? And no judgment. Again, I just went to go. How many times do I go to freaking press my phone to look at it? And it's not there. It doesn't work. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I get, I get, I could see it that way too. The chick. Um. Let me look at the community votes. I think. The second one is Kanika Jenkins. So what do you guys think? Do you want the next case to be Kanika Jenkins? Okay, Rose Gold. I would love to get you up on panel and talk about it. Debate Flat Earth with me. And not like in a dick way. I'm very open-minded and I do agree NASA lies about many things. But... I love to hear the arguments because I have done a lot of research into flat earth because I love, tell me, you know, like prove to me. And there are things that do make sense, but for majority, no. Kanika Jenkins is cool with me. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one.
let me see which I had Rebecca Zahau, Kanika Jenkins, Brandon Swanson, and Maura Murray. So the next two top ones are Kanika Jenkins and Rebecca Zahau. You do believe in the firmament, Rose Gold? Peter North on as a guess, I wish. That's what I'm saying, Shay. Would you want to come up on panel and talk about it? I because I'll get all the footage that I can. <laughs> Love has won, Sandy. Love has won. And I'm trust me, I am doing a Colts live. I did one in the past, but only focusing on Jim Jones. I want to go into all the Colts. <laughs> Chrissy, I'll just go and say, hey, it's me, Melissa, right? That worked for me last time. Made the strongest substance, which is real diamond. Yeah. Um, the the love has one cult from Colorado. Recently, um, the leader was found deceased and her cult following kept her body wrapped in Christmas lights and her eyes were removed. Oh, thank you, Carrie. You guys are, you guys are amazing. Really, Queen Bee, the Yellow Deli cult. I'm not sure if I'm familiar with that. Really, Shay. I love. I so interesting. So 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 interesting. But the Kanika Jenkins, I would have to get all the footage. And there's a lot of footage. But it's bizarre. I don't know, media is evil. I guess it's less likely. I know Molson Man, right? You watched it, Cheryl? Cheryl just watched the video of the twins running into traffic. I mean, I could probably pull it up if you guys want to see it. Uh huh, Chrissy. I know, Sandy, it would be a lot. I didn't know that. The Jac Do you know the Heaven's Gates website is still being run and uploaded? That is true, Carrie. There's a female cult leader right here on YouTube. Okay, uh, hold on, I'll look. Okay. Trigger warning. The girl survived, but trigger warning. This is from a different angle. This is from like uh, the security cam, but you'll see it from the, the officer's point of view after. But as they approach, both women run into the fast lane. 
one directly into the path of a car. This is turning into a serious incident, and the motorway cops are being called in to help. As the cops arrive... The first part. Hold on, this isn't the first part. What you're about to see is so... Ugh, oh, I'm gonna get freaking shut down for this shit. No. Hold on. I need just the footage. Hold on, let me look from... This is my dude, Mike. He'll definitely have the footage in here. Yeah, my dude. I'm serious. That's my best friend. There's footage of those cops, like, when they make the, the run... They go to hold them back. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. So you see the girls right here, okay, in the red coat and the white coat, okay, you guys? Nope. The, they they demonetize me, which I don't care. They always demonetize me because of the, co the topics I cover, but I get... Um, sometimes they will shut my entire stream down if I play something like this, especially if it's from like, I can't do 60 minutes. It'll immediately stop my entire, uh, stream while I'm live. But okay. Um, the girls are right here and watch in the background. You see them just all of a sudden book it informed and conscious for approximately 15 minutes okay one more time as you do uh, they ended up jumping off a bridge after this jumping off a bridge and surviving that too and then one goes on to murder a guy Yes, that was a Mack truck. It was just after they went to the hospital after this, they ended up being um, taken to the prison. It's a great story. Here, I'll link you guys to this full video. This is Mike from that chapter, and if you are into true crime. He does amazing. What I love about him is he keeps them short. I like short videos. Like just give me the basics. He'll do it in the beginning, like a timeline format, the beginning, what you need to know history, the main event, and then where are they today? Um, this is only 13 minutes long and he'll give you a rundown of their entire scenario. If you guys, um, Want to watch it? Oh no, they were hit, Rose Gold. They were hit. <laughs> one of them ran into the side of the truck, and then the other one ran in front of the Volkswagen. Yeah, devil crazy as women is right, Molson man. Maybe I should have clarified because all I wrote is twin video. Meanwhile, we just did the silent twin, so you guys might be getting confused. That is Ursula, like the twins, um, Ursula and Erica, is it? Urs the shocking case of the Erickson twins. Yeah, not really rose gold. Good, good, rose gold. You should. You should question everything. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Um,
They're Swedish twin sisters. The twins somehow survived as emergency services attempted to come to Sabrina's aid. She struck an officer in the face and again ran into the traffic. Um, elsewhere on the M6, six, Ursula screamed, spat, and scratched officers in an attempt to resist medical treatment. The court heard that Erickson had a rare psychiatric disorder, which made her hear voices, but she could not interpret what they said. Sabrina Erickson's current whereabouts are unknown. Her sister later recovered from her injuries and is now thought to be living in the USA. So the other one was ended up convicted something, and then the other one is in the United States. Uh, Wilson, man. Yeah. So crazy, crazy stories of twins. Twins gone wrong. <laughs> but okay, I guess maybe we'll do Kanika next. I don't know. I'll I'll pick one from the list. But what did you guys think? Did you guys think it was interesting of the silent twins? Bizarre. I suggest for you guys to go to like I love lives, but if I'm watching like a new case about a new case, I prefer videos that are pre-made, you know, like because they're just better in my opinion. But I like going to lives to discuss it. Um, so anyone who wants like all the specifics and like the clips, I yeah, Twins Gone Wild, Carrie. I suggest you guys look it up because there's so much more details or watch that video, that interview video I sent because it's so good. It's so good. Um, good. I'm happy you guys enjoyed it. So tomorrow is Tuesday trivia. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I haven't figured it out, but um, I'm going over to members only live. I'll be discussing casual things going on in the community um, and just venting and hanging out. So if you're a member and you'd like to join, I'll see you over there. If not, then I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you all. It's been such a good time. I'm happy you guys enjoyed it. I loved all of your guys' theories. And I look forward to the next case. And I will do a part two. I promise. I will get all the diary entries and clips. I'll figure out how to do it. Now I got Akasha and Janessa who's offering. That's awesome, Sabrina. So I look forward to doing it. But um, all right, you guys. Spread some peace, love, and positivity. Wait, anyway, most of that Trey Gang channel is still posting currently today. Did you see? I said, oh, no. I'll look at it, Shay. I'll look at it. Hold on. Let me write it. Um, where my pen at? Oh, here it is. Trang Gang Productions. Okay. Oh, thank you, Shay. That's awesome. Yes. All right, you guys. Spread some peace, love, and positivity. I love you all. Mwah. Namaste.